Thank you for choosing CalISO Corporation for your training needs. This short video clip is presented to introduce you to some basic information on the requirements of the Code of Federal Regulations, Food and Drug Administration, 21 CFR Part 210 and 211, Current Good Manufacturing Practice for the Manufacturing, Processing, Packaging, or Holding of Drugs. Part 210 is solely definitions used for these requirements. Part 211 contains the regulations for the minimum current good manufacturing practices for preparation of drug products for administration to humans or animals. Part 211 contains over 50 subsections, far too many to discuss in detail, so we will provide a summary of a few sections. Section 211.22, 211.25, and 211.34 discuss the responsibilities and authorities that various personnel have regarding the approval or rejection of components, drug product containers, closures, in-process material, packaging material, labeling, and drug products. The sections listed here discuss the facility requirements to safely manufacture drug products. Requirements such as facility design, adequate lighting and ventilation, appropriate plumbing and toilet facilities, as well as cleanliness and maintenance of the facility. These sections discuss the requirements of equipment design and maintenance, as well as proper identification of the equipment to indicate their contents and phase of processing. Section 21180, 21182, and 21184 discuss the requirements of receipt identification storage, sampling, and testing of components and containers. Section 21186 discusses the requirements of first in, first out, or FIFO of components, products, and containers. Section 21187 discusses the requirements for retesting as necessary, such as after storage for long periods or exposure to adverse conditions. Section 21189 discusses the requirements of how rejected product should be handled. Rejected product shall be identified and quarantined. Section 21194 discusses the specific requirements for containers and closures, such as they shall not be reactive so as to alter the safety of the drug. Section 211100 states that there shall be written procedures for deviations, which means you must have a documented, established procedure for how you handle deviations in the manufacturing process. Section 211101 is another section that states you shall have written procedures, which are designed to assure that products are what they state they are. Section 211.110 discusses the requirements for sampling and testing that shall be done in process to assure the integrity of each batch. Section 211.111 discusses the requirements, as appropriate, for time limitations to be established to assure product quality. These sections discuss the drug product packaging and labeling requirements. For example, the requirement for label reconciliation, prevention of mix-up during label processing, tamper evident packaging requirements for over-the-counter or OTC drugs, final inspection of labeled product, as well as clear expiration date requirements. Section 211.142 and Section 211.150 establish the requirements for warehouse storage and distribution of products. These sections discuss the requirements for testing of various types of drug products prior to release.
Section 211.170 gives specific details of the size of sampling and the length of time the test sample must be retained. Now this is a rather long list, but simply said, all of the sections listed here give very specific requirements of the records that must be generated and retained. Section 211.198 states that written procedures shall be established and followed for the handling of all complaints, both verbal and written. The procedures shall include provisions for review to determine whether the complaint represents a serious and unexpected adverse drug experience. A record of each complaint shall be maintained. We certainly hope you enjoy this online training experience. Please proceed to the beginning of your course to receive a more in-depth training on this FDA regulation. If you should have any questions or concerns, please see our Frequently Asked Questions page on our website.